Okay, so again, we're air handler one. So we mentioned about the return fan section, pillow block bearings, Zerk fittings. Um, the motor, fortunately, doesn't have, uh, it's got sealed bearings. There's no Zerk fittings in the motor, so you'll just be greasing um, the pillow block bearings and obviously the belt, maintenance the belt, right? Um, again, the inverter for the return fan. And then this is going to be their mixed air plenum. So it's the discharge of the return fan. On the back side is going to be your exhaust. So when you're in a, you know, in Title 24, it says you have to bring a minimum amount of outside air at all times in the building, that yet you're in that minimum position and the outside air temperature enthalpy or dry bulb is cooler than return air, then you can go in a full economizer state. Hence, that would be your exhaust. So the warmer would begin pushed out that and then sent outside. The return, the return damper is the one here in the center. Um, and then the one beyond it, which is on the other side of the return damper is outside air. So commonly the outside air and the exhaust air work in unison with each other and the return air is 100% um, opposite in control means. I don't know if we're doing, that's the case. Okay, so that is the case. So the return, uh, outside air and exhaust will be at the same position and then the return will be um, exactly opposite of that. Okay. Um, again, um, there's push buttons on, on the actuators if you want to manually open and close the, uh, the dampers. If you were to do so, once you make sure they're freed up, you want to make sure that they cycle before you turn the air handler back on. So if you're familiar with the Belimo actuator, if you were to push the clutch on them and manually open and close them, once you release the clutch, then they're going to go through a cycle so you know where zero is, 100%. So if you want to try to manipulate the dampers to make sure they're freed up during your maintenance routine, you can do so. It's just that make sure that they, you reset them and make sure they're controlling automatically once you're done. Okay. Um, looks like it's all sleeve bearings are on horizontal, so there's no true maintenance on the sleeves. Um, we, used to, we used to put graphite on things like that. We can't use it anymore, but for the most part, um, somewhat maintenance free. Just commonly what happens on outside air dampers is that they'll want to freeze up because they'd be sitting at that minimum outside air condition most of the time and they'll sit there and sit there and that's the unfortunate part is that no one maintains them or looks after them so then your efficiency goes away because you have free cooling and they're sitting there locked in one position so they're very important to maintain um, at least make for certain that they are going to stroke either or way open and closed okay um, you have bag filters I don't know I guess I mentioned about the sensor inside that's a Mixed air averaging sensors, so instead of having just one spot inside this air handler return or mixed air plenum, you use multiple sensors that are in part of that, that cable, that tub tubing, so they can reference it and, uh, and be. Um, again, after the uh, air obviously comes in either outside air or return air, and then it's filtered in bag filters, um, very easy to slide out and slide in. Um, you want to put the same pipe. It doesn't have to be the same manufacturer, but you want to have to make sure it's the same um, MERV rating. Okay? Um, there is a, a two inch filter slot that's here. Um, so again, um, pre bag filters, make sure you have the right MERV rating when you replace them. Um, just after those, these are the final filters. Yeah, the rigid, those are, these ones aren't half, but they're rigid flows. So they're like they're 80 or 95% rigid flows. So yeah, these are 100 bucks, probably around $100 a piece. So you want to make sure that your bag filters are the ones you maintain so that you can have a little long, more longevity with these final filters. Okay, these aren't cheap. Again, they're very easy to replace. Um, kind of labor intensive taking, bringing them up and taking them down only because one fits in a box. So obviously there's quite a few in here. Just behind it is obviously your, your heating hot water coil. And then right behind the heating hot water coil, or let's say downstream of it, is the chill water coil. So how often do you expect to uh, check the filters? Uh, I mean, every three months, every month? Yeah, you know the standard drill. As far as you know, if it's used all the time on a 24-hour basis, then it's obviously more frequently. But I would say the bag filters. Hopefully, you don't have too many dust storms out here. Because if you're in outside air and a dust storm comes in, then you have obviously you're bringing in dust and dirt. Um, I would say every. I would say every quarter. Um, I would say about every every quarter to check them. Um, you might get away with every six months. 
Are we kind of stretching? Yeah, it's stretching just it. dusty out here. Yeah, it's stretching it. So how do you tell if they're dirty and they need to be replaced? There's actually, uh, the manufacturers are pressure operating across the filters. So there's actually, you know, it tells you when they feel it's dirty or clean. So that way, it's not just the middle documentation. It might be like a half inch of static pressure across it. The downside of it is if, in fact, they do get to, they get dirty to the point where they'll start blowing by debris through it. And then, unfortunately, that creates more, you know, more problems with your final filters. So you could take a pressure drop across them and determine whether they're obviously dirty. But usually by visual sight, and it's probably one of the just better ways to go about it. If, you know, if they're getting plugged up, then it's time to change them. Yeah. You'd have to actually um, use your own magnet helix across it to actually measure it. EDOS actually the control system has an alarm for this to tell you that the filters are loaded for the pre filters and another one for the final filters. Okay, great. Thank you. So I was saying that it's actually out of the automation, they have pressure transmitters that reference the incoming and, and leaving static pressure. So they can monitor it for the BMS. So I didn't. I'm, so if you use a. So this is a supply fan, obviously a lar larger motor in size than the return by all means. Uh, it might be like 25 horse, 25 horsepower. So I can't emphasize enough, make sure that you're safe when you're working around this gear. It definitely will take um, fingers off and arms off and those kinds of things. So, and it's high voltage, it's 460, and then if DC vo voltage goes over 600. So, you know, we have to wear our own face shields and safety gear to get in above, anything above 100, you know, basically it's under, or 50 volts by, by OSHA. And that's the That's correct. So, <clears throat> you know, you want to make sure you lock and tag out, again, these units as you were to enter into them. Um, there are door switches. So um, the, the reason why this door switch is here is actually a UV bulb um, on the leaving side of the coil, ultraviolet bulb. Um, if you're changing filters, open the door that serves the UV bulb because if you're inside there changing the filters, you're getting blasted with UV rays. Okay, it will give you a, it will give you a sunburn. Cool. For bacterial control. That's correct. It will hurt your eyes. So that keeps the coil clean. Use a UV light. All right, so inside the supply fan cabinet, very handy one, there's a high, li high limit switch that's set for right, it's like four, four, four inches of static pressure. So if I were to run the return fan at full speed, or supply fan at full speed and, and bypass, then ultimately the duct pressure can get over four inches, especially if the VAV boxes are all backed off and there's no demand. So this switch protects the ductwork. So if it gets too high, it trips off. There's a manual button. Um, on the face of it, you don't have to take a cover off, you just push it in and it resets it, um, and then it'll re enable. But one thing you don't want to do, so you know, is obviously you want to lock and hang it out, and then you want to push the button, obviously, to make sure you're on the outside, because you don't want to get inside and push the button, and all of a sudden your pant leg is next to the belt. Okay? So you don't need to necessarily go inside, I have my hand on it at the moment, so it doesn't like you have to go over inside to reset it, so just make sure you're aware of that. Okay? And the same on the return. Um, this one's here. And, 